Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, we're here. I mean, let the music go on. I mean, let it go. The fact of the matter is, we, if you had the opportunity to look at both conventions, both the Republican convention and the Democratic convention, it was very interesting. And, uh, and so bottom line is that uh, uh, we're on now. You're going you're gonna to be bombarded with all kinds of material, both from a media standpoint, both from your smartphone, <laughs> both, both from radio, both from TV, uh, both from people knocking on your doors, the whole nine yards. So we're gonna we're having a presidential campaign. It's gonna be monstrous. Plus the fact we're gonna we're having local campaigns. We're having all kinds of things and whatever. So you're gonna be bombarded with a number of things. Uh, my only advice to you, in all due respect, don't get so bombarded. Don't get so engrossed in the piece. The bottom line: we're all creatures of our exposure. And so just take a little bit at a time. You can't read all these newspapers. You can't get all of the, what is it, the Facebooks, all of the Googles, and all that other good stuff. Just take it easy. Just kind of get a sense of, well, what do you want? What do you feel uh, you need? If you're working every day, normally you're just forgetting about it. You're just going to work 8 to 5. Forget the, what's, what are these people talking about? If you're not working, you're trying to figure out, how, do, how can I find myself a job? We're all selfish in many ways, you know. But the bottom line is that... Um, uh, we've got a presidential election, and come November, and it's going to be decided one way or the other. So, so what we're going to do in, in this hour is that we're going to give you an opportunity to kind of hear our opinions and our perspective, and from our uh, involvement and through the years, and and of current, if you will. And I'm talking about my dear friend Bob here. You've seen Bob before on the on the, on here with me, and so it's kind of neat. We're going to keep it nice and tight and. And uh, at some point in time, he, at times, he's going to be uh, I.e. supportive of the Republicans. And I'm going to ask him to define that what are the good <laughs> things about Republicans. And I know what he's going to do to me. He's going to hit me about the Democrats, if you will. And then out of this whole thing, we're going to come out with, uh, with some discussions. And then hopefully you'll take these, this, same, this same format, if you will, and have discussions in your neighborhoods, uh, in your family, in the whole nine yard. And, and hopefully when you get those ballots, you'll be able to you know, as best you can to uh, make a selection accordingly, okay? But at the end of the day, you know, it'll still be America. <laughs> uh, people are going to be elected. Whoever's going to get elected, that's what you're going to have to subscribe to. And you got four more years four more to years. deal with the deal again. So with that, I've opened up the show. And Bob, welcome. Hey, glad to be here, Bruce. Fantastic, you know. fantastic. You know, Bob, why don't we start off kind of like uh, what happened this morning? You know, I mean, you, you and I have both had the opportunity to look at the Meet the Press, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, it was kind of like the culmination, if you will, of the Democratic Convention, and folks were responding. Well, you know, you got, you got both ends. One, you got the Republican network, and then you got the Democratic network. Right. You got Fox, in, in perception-wise, a, a Republican CNN. network, and then you got CNN for the Democratic network. It was very <clears> interesting <throat> in terms of both of those ends. Uh, so... First off, just give me a sort of like an overall, overall view of what you felt the conventions did from the standpoint of informing the pop, pop, population. And what do you think? Well, you know, one of the, to me, yeah. and I'm coming from you from watching both yeah, of them, right. not, in, not one in its entirety, right. but uh, watching. And one demonized the president. And which one was that? That was that the was Republican. Republican. Okay. They demonized the president. Uh, he has done nothing right over the last four years. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you're a Republican, just listen to what your Republican leaders are saying and follow us. Put your put your trunk in our tail and keep on going marching right behind us. And then again, then we get to the Democratic convention and what you see is an explanation of what has gone on over the last four years. One of the things that I've said to the Democrats, and I am a strong Democrat, mm -hmm. I've said to them time and time again, we don't toot our own horn. I mean, if you own a car and someone cuts you off or blocks your path and you can't say something to them, you kind of toot your horn. Mm -hmm. Well, we've been, uh, the Democrats, in, in office have been fighting to get some positive things done and they don't say anything about it. They just try it, the Republicans say no, and they let it go. 
And what I like was, uh, I can't think of the Democratic governor's name that was on, uh, that made the statement, it's time for us to fight. Is that the it, Michigan the woman? The Michigan. Uh, oh, it? You know, he, he said, uh, yeah, yeah, fight. Is, and so um, my question is, when do we start fighting back mm -hmm. for the people? Mm -hmm. You know, business, you know, for some reason, it, 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 you listen to the Republican side of the convention and it was business will take care of everything that's your problem. Mm -hmm. You know, and, on the, and, and they've made it feel like on the Democratic side is that a social program will take care of all your problems. And then the Democrats came out and said, hey, we understand you need a job. You know, uh, we want the American dream. And the American dream is not a social program. And so people began to look and go, whoa, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but I've heard that all y'all want to do is, is, is help everybody. Well, no, we want to help you get on your feet. And then we want you to, to understand that it's up to you. You know, like President Clinton and in, in, uh, in the welfare reform. No Republican president could have ever gotten that passed. And so President Clinton says people on welfare have to start wor gradually working themselves off of welfare and finding a job. You know, and so Republican governors came to President Obama a few months ago and go, we need more time on this program. And what did the Republicans do at their convention? They tried to crucify him for saying okay. Well, they don't want he don't want people on welfare to go find a job. He don't want them to work. That was not it at all. Okay. You know, and so we have we the people out here that's mm -hmm. gonna the majority of us don't own a company or are not on welfare. Mm -hmm. We have to listen to both sides and say, wait a minute, this is too good to be true. I better research this. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, wait a minute, this is too good to be true. I better research this. And when you begin to research things, you find out what's really true and what's not. Okay. That's what All right. Well, now, let's, let's go back a moment here. I do, I do recognize the fact that you, you have uh, very strong democratic uh, lies, if you will, and I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, you, I appreciate that. That's very respectful because I know for a fact you spent quite a bit of time in the Democratic Party in many ways, even to this day. Okay. Now. And then naturally, since we don't have a, I mean, I'm the moderator, and we don't have a Republican to defend. Well, so I'll you know, act I, the sort. I'll act, uh, you're going to act the I'm, Republican I'm a, I'm party. A, I'm act the okay. I, I am. <laughs> I'm I not going to ask you what yeah, you're registered yeah, as. I'm a Lincoln Republican. <laughs> Lincoln. Oh, it's, 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 we can talk about that yeah, too. Okay. But you know, <laughs> but the bottom, line, but the bottom line is that let, let, let's talk a little bit about that. I'll talk a little bit about the Republican Party. Oh, okay. Hey, I don't know whether it was a flip of coin or whatever, but the uh, Republican Party got the. Uh, they got the, the choice of, of being first. I mean, they had their convention first, right, right? Uh, in the in the state of, uh, of Florida, mm -hmm. right? And it was kind of interesting that they did it in the South, okay? Again, with senior citizens, too, at the same time. When you think about senior citizen, right. you think about the health care. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's a, I mean, I that's another story, I another, story another show. Up. And the other side of the coin is that uh, being that it was from the South, uh, the whole issue of race, uh, was an issue, and, and that, in all due respect, that uh, that, that that I think uh, the Republican Party uh, uh, made made that a point of their base, because uh, we're still fighting the the the, 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 the war, if you will, oh, between yeah. the North and the South, and then, and it's fact, race is an issue. No one wants to talk about it, you know, but I think it's important that we talk about it because, in all due respect, uh, we, we've elected our first uh, African American black president, mm -hmm. okay, and and I think it's good for us to talk about this issue. And well, Newt Gingrich said uh, the president brought it up. <laughs> well, but the fact of the matter yeah. is, he happens to be an African American, yes. a Black American. Mm -hmm. He is a president of the United right. States, and people were we've had we had racist issues before that, and so consequently, I think people were more freely open to talk about the issue, which I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and maybe we might need another four years to talk a little bit more about it. Yeah. Maybe at the end of that time, we might be able to say, okay, fine, we don't have any racism anymore. Well, you think that'll happen? No, no way. Okay, mm -hmm. now, so with that with that said, I'm thinking that. Um, uh, I look at the platform and the people who were in the diocese and that's oh. together. I noticed that Congolese Rice was part of the deal, mm -hmm. and uh, I was thinking that um, uh, well, Governor Romney had made uh, with the NAACP and actually gone to the NAACP. I thought that was somewhat of a mistake. I, I thought he would have either had Congolese Rice go there, or if not that, uh, uh, 
uh, Colin Powell, General Powell, right. who was a military guy. And I might add too, also too, that it's, it's been over 50 years or so that that uh, uh, that the Republican Party, one or two of the candidates, had some relationship with the being military. Mm -hmm. It's the first time in in in, uh, in the Republican for years that they've not had a someone, either president or vice president, that had served in the military. Right. And I thought that was kind of interesting that uh, they, that, that was oversight, I think, a little bit over that point. And, um, and then the other side of it was that uh, here's General Powell that's sitting there, and uh, he wasn't part of the diocese. I well, thought I'm, that he I'm should trying have to been think part how many, of the diocese. How many of uh, uh, cabinet members of the Bush administration was there? Well, in all due respect, <laughs> Congolese Rice was there. But yeah. unfortunately, I think she would not have been there had, he, had she not gotten the okay from no, if former she, President Bush. Well, the other thing, I think, you know, that, no. I think uh, she was there because her name was in the press. Because she just she was just uh, oh, the golf made game? one of the one of the one of the first women in the south in, in the south for, uh, to, to be well, uh, well, uh, a member trust of the me, golf. I think that the, in all due respect, the former president Bushes were part and parcel responsible for doing that. Basically, trying to get some notoriety, if you will, that blacks were involved in the in the campaign and getting there. This is look, this is business. Yeah, on both sides of the aisle. Believe it. Whether it be Democrats or Republicans, it's about hey, we got to win. Whatever it takes to win, mm -hmm. we win. And that's why I'm saying that when you look at the South aspect of it, is that, hey, there's a there's a block of votes there that as far as I'm concerned, we're going to get it just because this man is black. His right. skin is black. And that's point blank. Nothing personal. Right. That's just the way it is. That's okay. It. The other side of the coin is that I was also looking for folks on the diocese and the, in the in the convention that were, uh, were, were prominent African Americans, you know, in the Republican Party. J.C. Watts, for instance, up in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. very articulate speaker, but I didn't see him. Right. He wasn't there. Or even from the standpoint, uh, General Powell. You know, this man, you know, former Secretary, uh, you know, State, was it Secretary, Secretary of State, State and and, uh, and Chief of Staff of the military and whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, he might have had, some, you know, his statement, his last statement about uh, who was he going to support was, you know, hey, I'm just going to wait and see. He's always done it that way. Right. But I don't, I don't think that is something that uh, if he was asked, he wouldn't have gone up front and talked about foreign policy because mm -hmm. in all due respect, uh, uh, both um, Governor Romney and Paul Ryan they didn't have that much of a background. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. But it would some, show some sense that there was, I'm sure he spoke to, to, uh, uh, to uh, former Secretary of State Powell, both Romney and, and Ron. They had to. to well, they should have. I Let's say it that way. I, I don't. I don't maybe, think maybe they not did. it was publicized, huh? You know, no, I, I don't think, think they did. Oh, look, I, anything. He's a businessman. Hey, uh, but in the, at at the uh, convention, certain things that went on showed that they don't think it through. You know, right? And I'm I'm like trying specific. to anything I'm specific. trying I'm trying to remember this one incident where, gosh, the fun part of getting older. First thing goes well, is the memory. You. I, I have memory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not and no, on, I, and on, on a live TV oh, yeah, show, yeah, I, I lose my memory. Are oh, you thinking about Clint Eastwood? Uh, Clint uh, Eastwood. Our dear friend Clint. Let's, let's, I, mean, I mean, hey, Clint is, Clint is out of sight. I mean, I, I was glad he brought the issue the way he did on the table. Again, age factor-wise, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember now, everyone else had to monitor. And Clint basically said, no, I don't need no monitor. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I look, can I'm, stammer on I'm my own. I am. Well, no. <laughs> No, but yeah. he, I'm who I am, and, yeah. he, and he did just what he was supposed to do, what, how he felt. I wish there wasn't a monitor for anybody, for that matter, oh, and man. let them go out there and make their speech. You're trying to make the convention one day. Well, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the problem right now. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't know what's going on. They've got a big staff of writers. They've probably spent about well, I can tell you eight or goes. ten million dollars with professionals I've, just to put this stuff together. I've been to three. You've been to three. I've been to three. As a writer, as, uh, as no, a writer? I've been to three as a as a an advisor. A, no, I, in as 80, an advisor. In, let me tell you the three I went to. In 1988, I went to, uh, as a Jesse Jackson delegate. Jesse. Jesse Jackson. And then I went as a Clinton delegate. Okay. And then I went as a a, a Hillary delegate okay. uh, to the last one. And we all did our little thing uh, when she uh, turned everything over. She uh, she she announced that she wasn't running and uh, gave her delegates to uh, the President Obama. 
or Senator Obama. But otherwise, you would have voted for Hillary. Uh, no, I, uh, uh, I'm not well, saying who I would have voted for. I asked you a question. I've never it's told anyone. Bob, I mean, what do you mean you've never told? You told I've me. Never told you told me just here on this show, right to today. I was asked. <laughs> I was asked early in the campaign. Yes. If I was, if I, I would help with that? Uh, Senator Clinton yes. at that time, uh, President Obama uh, uh, at that time. Most of us didn't even know he he senator, was running. Senator, he was a senator. Was at senator. That time. Yeah, he we was didn't senator. know he was he was running, and so about two weeks later, and they were just getting ready to go into Iowa and all that stuff, uh, is when I got the call from his campaign, and I had already committed to the other side simply because I uh, to Hillary uh, to Hillary, Hillary. Okay. I had committed. Well, Sheila and, Jackson Lee from Texas. She basically yeah. did the same thing. And uh, Sheila. you remember Sheila? Yes. Okay. And so uh, I, um, you know, and it was all because of President Clinton, because of the things that we. Well, what about here. the message we talked about? These monitors and whatever. What do you feel okay. about those? Do you like the monitors or do you not like the monitors? Well, do you think they, you, you think these people are really telling you the the facts, or is this someone else's words? They took words? somebody took time out to write that, and they are taking time out to read it. You know, is the way I look at it. And being at a convention, I know what goes, you know, a lot of what goes into it, the behind the scenes and everything else. And one of the things is those speeches are written days before and they are tweaked, you know, hours before. And, then, and, and so in doing so, to try to get up there and ad lib what you were supposed to say is not going to happen. But at the same time, isn't this situation, because it's a presidential situation, the person who's running for president has to approve all these speeches. Would you say not? They at should. least looked at them. Yes. Right? Oh, without a that, doubt. That's part of the deal. Right. Okay. But in this particular case, with Clint Eastwood, we're talking about Clint Eastwood aspect mm -hmm. of it. Clint said, hey, look, I, I'm, I'm who I am. I'm going to just lay it the way I feel about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, you but I, my thing done. was, I didn't understand why you got to have a uh, secret guest. Secret guest? Yeah, that's what Clint Eastwood was. Nobody knew he was who the secret guest was. Well, they know, they told him say you go out a big surprise for you. We got a special guest. But Bob, but Bob, and but so Bob, but Bob, tune in. But Bob, this <laughs> yeah. is but this is still business. I mean, you're trying to get folks to look at TV to get your message and this, that, and the other. So I mean, tell them anything. In fact, I may have Bob here or something. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to people turn their TV off? Huh? Okay, but but, he, but, but yeah, but yeah I Clint, understand. You know that. what I'm saying? And and so but him picking up that chair, nobody knew he was going to pick up that chair. No, and he was just going to just do his own thing. Yeah, and he, he had a one man show. Yeah, but he did his own thing. I mean, what, what if, in all due respect, what if Richard Pryor was sitting there? Ooh, huh? Ooh, huh? We had a lot of bleeps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, hey, yeah. everybody enjoys him off stage, mm -hmm. right? And then the other comedians look, look at the right. radio, look, look at TV at, at that night after the convention. They were saying anything and everything they want to say, right? Right. And, and candidates would go over there and do their thing too after hours and this, that, you know what I'm saying, right? But the convention thing to me was just a business situation. It was to get the message across the person who's running for office. They got con total control of that whole piece. It was just one that, hey, uh, and I'm sure that Romney said, I'm sure, uh, you know, you can, you can imagine that prior to uh, him coming on, uh, I could see a, a get together with the uh, former governor, Governor Romney, with the rest of the folks, and they all shooting the breeze and talking the business. And Clint is, is hop, hop, blah, 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 I'm ready to go. And, and, and they say, well, look, uh, you know, we didn't get this written, but what do you think? Well, what do you think? And they were just trying to get some feeling about mm -hmm. how he's going to present himself. And at the end of the day, he just said, well, hey, you know, you get what you, you, yeah. you, you see what you get. Right. You know, and I think that. And so, hey, so I'm saying, uh, that should be for everybody, but you can't do this. This is a business situation. These guys have to have some sense of control because right. they're running for office. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's running right. for office. So basically, they say, okay, fine. We'll dot the I's and we'll cross the T's and we'll sign off to a certain uh, degree. That's, that's it. And I mean, people were nervous about President Clinton's mm -hmm. speech. Yeah. I mean, it went over 20 minutes, <laughs> you know, 20 minutes over. But, but it comes close. I think of the two campaigns, as far as the speaker's concerned, it, it, uh, former President Clinton comes closest to doing his own thing right. than anyone else. You know, he, you know, he's, he's been there before. Right. I could see him when, say, for instance, he said, "This is my speech. This is mm -hmm. what I want to say," and they picked up eighty percent of it, right, or ninety percent. Well, what it, what others, happened was, as he got into the speech and began to get comfortable, I was at the I was at the convention when he went forever and ever, and then all of a sudden we were sitting there looking, going, "Where? What is he talking about? What's mm -hmm. going on?" Mm -hmm. But the other night, Thursday night, Wednesday night, I was sitting in front of my TV 
glued. You were glued. I was like, whoa, is this? And I started thinking back to, was this what really went on when Dukakis was running and he gave that long speech? I was there. And uh, he did I was the same job, and he and he and he gave that long speech, and people was yelling. But you know, some of it gets lost because of the time, and you're tired, and all that in the audience. But at home, I was like, man. But he was vintage. And he outlined what's been going on. Yeah, well, he, well, he was. And a he just said it right up front. Yeah, but Bob, he, he was president for four, for eight years. Yes. But he, but he said something he's that the American the people he's need to understand. He's working with Republicans. He's working with Republicans. He's working with Democrats. And for, in all due respect, President Obama is lucky to have had him up there because he was the only one that could communicate with Republicans. Yeah. Well, right. That's what the Republicans. No, no, right. Uh, that's what the Republicans right? thought. No, I, I ain't gonna say that because there was a lot of Republicans against him for a long time. Yeah, but bottom line, and, he's, but he's he's working with them every day now. Yeah. You know, from you know all sorts and of business and everything kind else. of situation. Along well, that once line. You, and, but. You know, my thing with, with both with both conventions is somebody's got to start telling the whole truth. Yeah, but Bob. And not Bob, just a Bob, portion Bob, of the but truth Bob, but Bob. and bending it but that's your, your way. That's from your perspective. But my point is that Governor Romney, just like President Obama right now that's running for office, mm -hmm. he's a creature of his, his exposure. Right. Governor Romney's a creature of his exposure. So mm -hmm. it's just like a debate between Yale and, and Harvard and folks like that and says, okay, fine. I'm going to go with my strong points. I'm going to go with my strong points. Mm -hmm. And then they just clash. Right. But in this particular case, they got all these folks around them. And mm -hmm. they basically say, okay, fine. But they're running those shows. You know, and, and we know what reminds me of thinking about this. I'm thinking, and I'm going to throw this out to you mm -hmm. on, on the Democratic Convention. I, I saw Clinton. Mm -hmm. And I can remember when, when, the, when, the, when Hillary was running for office, it was pretty heated. Right. And then there was some issues there. Then a all of a sudden, of, no, there was a lot, a lot of, of issues. issues. And then, the president, then, then, president, then all of a sudden Obama was elected mm -hmm. president, and then all of a sudden there was a divide there. But then all of a sudden there's Clinton speaking in behalf of, uh, of President Obama, and then I'm sitting there saying, okay, then. so they made, they made it. But then I look at, I look at the, the black folks, and I, I didn't see, in fact, I didn't see Reverend Sharpton. Where, where, where was Reverend Sharpton? He wasn't even, a, he, and he's a reverend, he didn't even give an old invocation. But he's been on radio basically Putting together fundraising and and getting folks, uh, black folks, it really rare. Well, I have to, to, I have to say vote. it this way. What's up? There wasn't a lot of uh, television and radio uh, commentary. Uh, uh, people that that have an opinion that was on the on the dais itself. Period. There were there well, were, you know there was on uh, the, the 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 previous governor of uh, of. Uh, I think she's the governor of, of uh, Michigan, or uh, the mayor. No, she was governor. Uh, she was there, and I think she ha has a radio show. And then there was one Latino lady that does a radio show. But other than that, I don't think any, there was anyone else. Well, what about Jesse Jackson? And uh, what about Jesse? I mean, I mean, well, him and Clinton basically are basically in the same situation. I mean, couldn't Sharpton, Reverend Sharpton, have gotten, gotten together with uh, the president and says, okay, fine. I realized that, uh, I, mean, it was, I think it was a little something about uh, at early on when a, when a reporter picked up uh, something that, that Reverend Jackson had said about Obama, mm -hmm. you know, as a young kid or something to that effect. And then and all of a sudden, uh, Reverend Jackson was never invited, if you will. But to me, I mean, he opened the door to African American males, if you will, for the presidency. He opened that door, just right. like you said. You went to that went to that particular convention. Mm -hmm. So why wasn't he given the opportunity to to express, uh, you know, himself? That's that's one of the uh, things that uh, I can't answer. Okay. I mean, because. But you feel that is an issue. I on a, issue. Yes. On uh, I think that you sometimes we have a tendency to be looking to put the blinders on as we look ahead. And we forget what got us there, and in this, in this, in this, uh, in both of these conventions, the one thing I saw was everybody knew. You know, it was you had senators, you had representatives that's been around, but other than that, everybody was new. Yeah, but what about, I mean, nobody had any seasoning on. Yeah, but, but what about? You know? But again, like I said, don't get me wrong. I, I knew Congolese Rice was there, but she was there. No, no, she was at the Republican. I'm talking about the Democratic right. side. I just didn't know due respect. I didn't see any black folks on the diocese. I saw them in the crowd. Now, don't get me wrong. Oh, they were but there. I didn't see them in the, you know, on the diocese aspect of it. I would I would have thought that they would have been on the diocese talking to these issues too. Well, one of the things that you find in politics is you don't spend a lot of time with the people that you think you have. I.e., if I that's why 
one convention was in Carol in the Carolinas. But it was still in the and South. One Both was in, the in South. and one was in, in Florida, Florida. Yeah. Because they are swing states. Yeah. But but again, and, it was still know, in the South. It's a South yeah. though. It's but I'm South. saying they're swing states. Mm -hmm. And so that was that was that was it. So how do you what do you do with the other swing states? You bring them close to the stage mm -hmm. during the convention. So Illinois in uh, Ohio, all of those are closer to the state. You have importance, you see. So there were many African American so, faces there. Oh, at that, at that particular let me tell you, time. Oregon took twenty or more, mm -hmm. and that's and I believe that's blacks. for blacks. And I can be, I can tell you that I was at at uh, at at elections for our delegates when they were saying we have met our quota. What? I, I so helped they me. made that statement. He, he, the, the chair of the Democratic, well, he wasn't the chair, I don't think he was. He might have been chair at that Quoted time. Quoted in reference to he, blacks. In, in, as far as blacks. In other words, don't vote for any more because <laughs> we got our two. And I went off. You know me. You don't know that. I, I went know off. I know that. And he apologized all the way to Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was but it's not, still there, though. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it now. It's still there. So and, so. And, and so. It, you want to know how? Oh, just take it to Oregon, right. and still the Nash. Take it to right here in Oregon. We're gonna talk about that, but that's okay. Be, we're gonna talk right, about that. Right, right, quick. Yeah. How many blacks are in positions to make decisions in the state no, of Oregon? No. Well, look at what they've done to Jim Hill when he was running for governor. Yeah, I remember. I, that. I was in the room. You want to get to that, did you? Uh, we're gonna talk about that. I was in the room when that happened. Okay, that, we'll talk know, about that. So, and Jim but, was very qualified, more than qualified. Right. But on this, on this, on this issue of running for president, it's a decision to be made here. Do you want a guy that know how to destroy or a guy that's trying? Well, let's get to back to the, I understand, we're gonna get, that's the part there. I and you're a strong Democrat. I feel very comfortable with that. You know that, don't you? Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> now, the other thing about that whole piece about, uh, about blacks, if you will, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the black ministers. I mean, I remember that this one issue that was kind of like set up was when, uh, when Obama basically approved the whole issue of gay marriages. Remember mm -hmm. that? And then uh, black they went ministers. through. They went right to black ministers, and, and, and they and, said no. And yeah, they said no. And they supposed to say no. Well, well, no, nah, well, no. Nah, that's that, their that's belief. From, that, that's your opinion. That's their belief. That's right. That's right. And if that's their belief, and they and their and their Bible says that it should not happen, well, that's should, what they have to but, do. But should they have been given the opportunity to voice that opinion at the Democratic National Convention? No, that's not their platform. Why Church and state. What is that? That's huh? a major issue. Uh, but that's not their blacks. that's not their platform. They can they can uh, then should the, should the Democrats be allowed to come to their pulpit and tell their minister their their uh, congregation why? Well, no. But there but many ways people take it from the Republican Party standpoint that all blacks are going to be uh, be supporting President Obama, Democrats, regardless. Well, of that. you know we see, right? Is that right or not? That's wrong. Okay. And you know why it's wrong? Mm -hmm. Because we are not one issue people. But that's and not, see, and so that's somebody not what the wants to make that's not what the media So saying. that's what the media wants you to think. Oh, the blacks gonna support him because he's black. Right. Wrong. We're gonna support him because his policies are right and they're gonna be good for the country. Mm -hmm. Not just good for us, but good for everybody. Because we understand that when whites get rights, sometimes so do we. I got you. You know, not all the time, but sometimes so do we. Okay. And so if we take all the rights from them, we ain't got nothing. Bob, this is good. You I know? think we're going to take a short break and come okay. back, and then you rest up a bit and pull out the notes. <laughs> 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 we're going to take a short break, folks, and come right back and continue this discussion. And uh, call your friends. Call your buds. I mean, this is, I think this is a good discussion. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome back, folks, to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Richard here with Bob Williams, and we're talking. We're sort of like going back and taking a little reflection on the on the conventions, both the Republican and the Democrats. We're just kind of going a little here, a little there, a little there, and it's hard for me to control Bob here. You know, he's a hard-nosed Democrat, and and see, I'm a moderator, so I can't be such a hard-nosed other side. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm not I'm a, just a good. Solid, you know, you know, I'm not a hard-nosed Democrat. You know? I'm just, I just believe that in America, if we're going to lead the way. We gotta have to help people. Well, I, you know, Bob, look, I agree with you in many ways because when I think about President Obama, you know, at times I really think he's a Republican. You know that? Mm -hmm. You know why? You know why? Why? Why do you think of that? Uh, when he announced his presidency in, in Illinois, he was he did it on the same steps where, where, f where former President Lincoln, Lincoln was a Republican. Yes, a Republican, yes. right? And he's always made some quotes about Lincoln and whatever. And I could not understand why the Republican Party never took advantage. Of those opportunities, if you will, of the fact that Lincoln was a Republican. You remember, you know, I, yeah. I talked to you about this this freedom calendar that they had. It was an excellent calendar. Yeah. Wouldn't you think so? Oh yeah. There were some very prominent folks, diversity across the board, and even even Dr. King was in there, and and Dr. Abernathy, yeah. uh, former Republicans. And uh, I would have thought that they would have enhanced that. Unlike the Democratic Party, they didn't have a freedom calendar. Why is that so, Bob? Well. You have to remember that. We tried, during, though. Remember, I remember yeah, we tried. We tried. Doing, doing uh, Reconstruction and all of that, uh, What was the majority of the Democrats were in the South. And they were Klan. And they were, they were Klan. Klan members. members. Yeah. Were Klan members. Were slave owners. Ku Klux Klan. Right? Klan's members. Democratic Party. Okay, we stopped now. We okay. got, I got that across. And so... <laughs> That's okay. That's enough, Bob. And, and so, that's but enough. but the but the open-minded were, were the Republicans of the, of the yes, North. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's and right. And so, but things have kind of flipped over the years. And, and, and the first African Americans uh, that participated mm -hmm. in the whole uh, process mm -hmm. were Republicans. Yeah. They, we had elected congressmen elected. and senators mm -hmm. from the South. Yes. When they when they when they, when they, when the well, South seceded from the uh, right, from, from, from the from the country from mm -hmm. the U.S. Right? Well, they didn't succeed. But, but we don't want to go there. We yeah. don't. We don't. We don't want to. We, 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 I won't. I won't. I won't get into that too. Yeah, okay. That's we, another time we'll do we, that. We have to bring the calendar. Right. And, because and we really did say because I remember we had this discussion yeah. before. I had the calendar that the Republican Party had done, and then you was going to go to the Democratic Party. Why and didn't ask you them guys for that ever calendar. put that out so people could see it? Whatever well, happened to that? Well, Bob, I'll tell you just briefly what that. I went to a convention too. This in fact is. <laughs> I went to the I went to the Bush convention in New York, and uh, it's kind of interesting how I did this real quick. Like, um, uh, someone approached me while I was on the floor because I was a delegate, and said, "Sir, would you like to have one of these calendars?" And they had not put those in the packets of everybody, mm -hmm. and it was sitting up in a room. And I looked at this calendar, and said, "You got to be kidding me!" And so I got the calendar, and I got excited about the whole piece, and uh, even to the point that. Um, I said, I started asking questions to all of the delegates. Well, what, what, what? well, they didn't know it was there. It didn't even exist. And so, anyway, that was one piece that I happened at the convention. But, but then something else happened to me at the convention. And i got to say, it, and I've said, I think we chatted about this piece, about a reporter from NPR came to me, an African-American black guy. Mm -hmm. And he, naturally was, there wasn't that, that many blacks I at know. the convention. <laughs> and he came to me. And so, naturally, I'm going to say what I had to say. And uh, he said, well, gee, Bruce, uh, why, why would you want to be supporting, the, you know, the President Bush or whatever? I, I said, well, first off, I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm really pro-Lincoln, and, and I really would like the Republican Party to take advantage of their, their, all of their assets as it relates to black folks, mm -hmm. freeing the slaves and all this other Lincoln, you know, the, the Buffalo soldiers, you know, all that stuff. And so anyway, long and short of it all, uh, he said, well, gee, well, this is historical. I said, yes, it is. He said, gee, I'd, I'd like to get my daughter in here. I said, well, won't you just bring your daughter and come sit, sit with me in the delegation and sit right in the middle of it? And, you know, I figured I was going to get to be able to talk about Republicans mm -hmm. from that perspective. Mm -hmm. I feel better than just being we, we have one here type routine. And so long and short of it all is that uh, all of a sudden the Secret Service came up and uh, some folks in the delegation, the Oregon delegation, had basically called them up and said, hey, you know, we've got these other blacks that are sitting up in here. And they threw them out. Wow. And so I was a very, I was a little disappointed about that. So I was I say I made my point, okay. Mm -hmm. and, but the point of the matter is that that calendar and that incident. But then, you know, hey, but you keep going on. Right. You know, Oregon is not the cleanest state in the world when it comes to race. We still have problems, but there's no problem. Yeah. No problem. I don't have any problem. Right. I mean, it's just I just say that hey, you just go it on. But the bottom line is that 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 calendar has a lot to be said, and I think that would, that's that to me is a very progressive way. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, Republicans have not taken advantage of. It. I did come back. And I got a whole bunch of those calendars, and I gave them out to the entire Republican Party. And Kevin Mannix, I got to give credit to Kevin Mannix, gave us some dollars to buy more of those. And a guy by the name of Dan Lucero, 
and I went out and we started handing those out, including you, gave you a bunch of them. Yeah. And then you went to the Democratic Party, I know you did, yeah. and said, look, why can't we have something like this? Right. And, you know, but bottom line is that uh, that happened. And since you asked me, and I, I'm letting yeah. you know the deal. And now, uh, you know, I mean, what, what I like about your, what you did is the fact that it shows that it's not about what party you belong that's to. Right. It's what's right. It's what's right. That's right. That's right. And and that's why Bruce and I get along so that's well. Right. That's right. You know, we'll that's give right. each other a hard that's time, right. that's but right. we get that's along so well that's simply right. because that's we right. know that we want to do what's that's right. right. That's right. Well, you know, I got to say also, too, I asked you about those ministers, you know, those black ministers yeah. that was on national TV. And I would have thought that the Republican Party, i.e. the Romney folks, and I did, I called on some folks down back back east and said, look here, you got these black ministers on national TV, why don't you, pick these, why don't you get, get together and, and maybe get the governor Romney to have a press conference with them and, mm -hmm. and i.e. be supportive of them, you know, because they had, they had taken a stance, right? And, you know, all over the place. <clears throat> And then all of a sudden, I was told through some of the folks in that area, Bruce, we're not reaching out to blacks. Right. Just straight up. We're yeah. not, not reaching out to blacks. But that, that was their decision. Well, that was their decision. You have to understand that in, in politics, you pick your poison. Yeah. And so you either say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to, to poor people and try to put them, get them to the poll, and I'm going to reach out to the middle class and tell them why we're trying to keep them in the middle class mm -hmm. and what it does, and then some of the others will trickle in. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you go over here and you say, I'm going to reach out to whites. <laughs> Just plain and simple. I'm going to reach out to whites because I know that some of these people, not a lot of them, but they still got this, that mentality that white is right, and they're going to come over here too. But the reinforcement of that piece is the fact so, that President Obama is black. Yeah, point blank, and that's why we're having this discussion. That's it, and it's okay. And and you know, okay. I think this discussion is good. And somebody needs to just look look the horse in the face rather than you know and say, hey, we have a problem with race in America. Yep, 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 yep. We need to talk about it right now. We need to understand, not uh, you know, like Jesse Jackson said, the first year President Obama was elected, just because we have a black president doesn't mean that everything is hunky-dory. Right, right. you know, and you know what time I saw that? 2.30 uh, in the morning. Wow, 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 you wow, know? wow. Well, you know, you, you make a good point about the fact that, uh, you know, we are talking about this issue, and an incident just happened to me this past week. I, um, I tried to get as, a, as someone to be a part and parcel of what we're doing, one of the other journalists, legitimate, one of the largest newspaper in the, in the state, tried to get someone that, was, that, that had gone to the convention, i.e. the Oregonian, a uh, guy by the name of Jeff Mapes. Mm -hmm. You know, he writes the political column. And, you know, he was at the Republican convention aspect, of, and uh, and Dave Sarenson went to the Democratic convention, but Dave wasn't available. But but I, I did get Jeff. I mean, I just accidentally got him on the phone because mm -hmm. they don't pick up the phone. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? But anyway, as I was having the discussion with Jeff to come on the show and whatever, he went on this way, that way, and at the end of the day, his his statement was, Bruce, I, I don't handle the. Uh, the, uh, the, black, the black thing. Yeah. Uh, David Saracen handles the black thing. I handle the white thing. Uh, he didn't say that way. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that's what it is. You understand the and, code. And, and he, his <laughs> position was his position that well, I was trying to badge him. I wasn't mm -hmm. trying to badge him. I said, we need to have a discussion on this issue of race. Right. And you know, you're the, you represent the largest newspaper in the state of Oregon, if you will, mm -hmm. the Oregonian. And why not have you sitting here? I mean, that, it'd be a good deal. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I sure know more than you do about this issue. We do have an African-American president. So why don't we have it developed? Because the public that right. you're writing to, you're a creature of your exposure. You need to have access to this piece. That's why you can't write about it. Right. So anyway, long and short of it all is, Nancy, he's, he's disappointed and upset. So, you know, hey, yeah, he, he didn't make it. And, life you know, goes on. And thank goodness yeah. we have uh, uh, community television. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and that's another situation that I would say to the public across the board. And thanks to, to former, former Mayor Neil Goldsmith. If we if, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have this community television mm -hmm. aspect of it. Because and if you notice also too, as far as I'm concerned, it should be part of the of the uh, of the announcement. You know, in the paper for TV and this that and right. that. Right. You got OPB in there. You got all these others, but you don't have community television. You know, their schedule. Mm -hmm. Because in all due respect, this is community. Right. This is probably the most diverse entity. You know, in our city, in our state. 
which is community television. Mm -hmm. And it should be part and parcel of the whole process of journalism right. to educate people out in, in, in the whole. And we don't have nobody paying, paying us to do this. No. It's so we're not beholden to anyone. All, all we're going to tell you how we feel and what we've found yes, out. Yes, yes. You know, and so. Regardless of the background. Regard, and, and that's it. Yeah. You know, that's just it in, in a nutshell. And my thing, my thing, though, is that in, in Oregon, we have to, we must, as black people, not fall into that pull yourself up by your own bootstrap mm -hmm. mentality. Because it's going to take all 30 or 40,000 of us working together to accomplish whatever there is to be accomplished. And rest assured, if we come together as blacks and accomplish something, all boats rise. You know, uh, everybody else is going to reap some of the benefit in this state. And, it, and that's the thing that uh, I think the, pre the, Ob the Obama administration is trying to push as far as uh, this country is concerned. Stop being so selfish. Help each other. Well, you know, you know I like what you said there because now I'm going, and I'm going to the Democratic Party in his, in his administration, mm -hmm. and I would hope that if, in fact, he gets the opportunity to, to pick up another four years and, and or if uh, uh, former Governor Rob, uh, Romney. Romney picks up that piece, uh, we're the most highly uh, incarcerated country in the world. Yeah. We've got over one million people, in in percentage-wise, mm -hmm. there are many blacks. And I would have thought, and, and here's, here's President Obama, you, you've heard of late, there's been all these shootings and killings. In fact, I, I spoke to his a couple own, of parents. His own hometown. Yeah, right there in hometown in the area Chicago. that he was at. And the bottom line is that I would have thought something would have been said about that on the diocese. Why not? About well, this whole issue of the number of people we have in these institutions. Not just right. blacks, but across the board. But perception-wise, there are more blacks in the in the institution mm -hmm. than there are anybody else. Well, that's uh, why didn't he, why, why 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 wasn't that part of the platform to and, solve that problem? And that's Maybe good, education. That's a good question. You know, and I and I think he's doing it. And I might be giving up some some secrets here, but I think he's doing it kind of in the back part. door. I beg your pardon. In the back secret? door, <laughs> the, in a back door way, okay. and that is. Education, education, education. Yeah, but, so, but you people know, want some inspiration down at the and, bottom here. I and mean, that, you know, and, in all due respect, folks are sitting up in those institutions. Mm -hmm. Their fathers, their cousins, their mothers, their, their, you know, there's yeah. a number of them. They're female. But the bottom line, they have nowhere to go. Right. I mean, you, you, the whole idea is that you, you do the crime, you do the time, you should be able to get out and go out and pick up a job. But in all due respect, you can't get a job. Well. It was something. It was something that was said the other day, and I don't, can't remember where where I heard it. But it said it's very difficult for a black man to come out of prison and get a job. He said, and he said that's very difficult. But you know what's really shameful is that a white man can come out of prison and get a job before a black man that has never been to prison. Mm. In this country, that's how bad the race it war is. is. Well, that's what I'm saying. And so it's <laughs> great that we have President Obama being president. I really think, you know, and again, like I said, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not swinging one way or the other. But the bottom line is just what, what's true. Right. Talking to the facts aspect of it, we've got to get to the point where we can communicate with one another. And that's until we can do that, we can't really compromise. Because in all due respect, when you think about it nowadays, right now, people as they're walking down the street or. Uh, if you happen to be a, a black living up in Beaverton or Lake Oswego or whatever, all white coming, all white coming into <laughs> the, to Northeast yeah. Portland or this, that, and the other. I mean, everybody's sort of an uneasy kind of a thing. And I think the only way, and we, we it's an uneasy, but hopefully it'll, it'll resolve itself as time goes in a more positive kind of an arena. You know what? You know what helps change that? And I noticed it in the '80s, uh, and that's a job when. Uh, President Clinton when was in office, and everybody was everybody that wanted a job had a job. You didn't have time to be all this hate and everything. But the moment the job situation gets bad, the question becomes: If I'm the white guy and you the black guy and you got the job, yeah, I'm wondering it. why you got yeah, a job yeah, in front yeah, of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the hatred and the bigotry begins to show itself. Yeah, yeah. And then the black guy is going is wondering why you know what he had to do why. Yeah. He's got a job, and he's not as smart as I am. Yes. And then we begin to 
polarize things and yeah. pull apart. Yeah. And this is the thing that we have to stop doing. You know, the one thing I learned and I try to live each day is what I learned in, from uh, Nelson Mandela in South Africa when he made a speech. And I was sitting there and he said to the people in there, we have to come together because we are all South Africans. And a lot of people looking around didn't get it. But what he was saying was, it can't be because you're black or you're white. You're all South Africans. Mm -hmm. And that's the important part for us. We're all Americans. I agree with that. I agree with that. Now, if we're talking about jobs, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I still like to focus on all those folks that are incarcerated in that aspect. Of it. I remember how, how I came here as a Marine recruiter, and that during that particular time, there was a draft, okay? Mm -hmm. And there was expungement, meaning that if you got into the military, uh, you know, you spent two years, whatever your record was, was forgiven. Right. You got me, and then you were just a veteran. In fact, you could even go back and retire like, the way you want to. But that meant everybody had to go into this melting pot, mm -hmm. okay? We don't have that today. And as far as I know, that, that might be an option, because the Peace Corps at one point in time used to be around. I mean, people could do a number of things as right. opposed to just promote the war. But the fact of the matter is, uh, why not get that out? Israel does it. Everybody, everybody in the state of Israel is part of the military. Right. You got me? So meaning everybody's got a job. Right. You see what I'm saying? And and now we don't do that. And and when I think about the military, I think about Colin Powell. He was never West Point mm -hmm. or Naval Academy. He was just community college. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he went all the way up chief of staff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, general. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So my point is that we've taken that out of our place. And it was a good melting pot because I can still remember when I was in boot camp uh, uh, well, so was education, Bruce. Yeah. Remember when we were going to school, it was segregated. Education, uh, we might have been segregated. You were in one room and everybody else was in another school, you know, but you were, it was expected of you to learn. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, so. and if you did not or yeah. you did wrong in yeah. school, yeah. you didn't want to go home. Yeah, yeah. Because the consequences was yeah. great. Yeah. Today, if the kid does wrong in school and the parent comes up there, they want to jump on the teacher. Mm. You know, we got to get back. You know, I, I say we can't continue to live in the past, but we have to get some of those old values. You know, like it takes a it takes a village to raise, raise a child. Remember mm. that one? Yeah. We don't have no village no more. Hey. What happened to the village? <laughs> Nobody want to be the child either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got children uh, cursing out their parents at three, yeah. four. But they, but, they, but they need a support mechanism aspect yeah. of it. You know, babies are having babies. I hate to put it that that's way. What, that's my favorite saying. And, but the fact of the matter is we got to do something. They got yeah. brought here. They got cousins. They got uncles. They got aunts and this, that, and the other. They've got to get back involved in the process. You know, I was talking. But they got to be working. That's true. But I was talking to my cousin today at breakfast, and I was saying to him, think about this. Slavery. We were enslaved, and we were expected to reproduce. And at all costs. And so you just slept with everybody, anybody. You know, the mentality today is not for reproduction for, for the master. It's just so that you can stick your chest out and you sleep with anybody and everybody. That's the slave mentality. Mm. We got to get away from that mm. and, and, and get back to So what mechanism respect. are we going to use? I mean, the church is there, but why, why, why can't we well, use that mechanism? The, you know, a lot of the churches are, 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 are preaching fear. Preaching fear. Fear. Black churches. Black churches. They preach fear. Fear and brim. Brim, uh, 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 you know, fire and brimstone fear. You know, uh, if you don't do it this way, you're going to hell. Oh, I see. Okay. And, you know, but some, some of the ministers are now, and I, I like going to the church that I go to simply because he's teaching. And Who is this? At, Who is this? Uh, Reverend Martin. Reverend Martin. Oh, Reverend yeah. Martin. Reverend Martin. Right. Okay. And Reverend Martin, he opens his Bible and he says, turn to such and such a That's place. Mount Olivet, right? Mount Olivet. Okay. And he said, he tells you what chapter to turn to. And this, in the past two weeks, he's been talking about division mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how division destroys. Mm -hmm. It don't hurt. It destroys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, you know, I just wish he would come on here and just kind of well, talk about well, it. Why don't you give him a call? I, I, I most certainly will. Now, you know, another area, think about economics. I still am thinking about these young folks in, in many ways who, are, who have no way to go. They have no, no support mechanism in right. many ways. And it's really a tough situation, you know, i.e., when you start thinking about, about blacks, it's always the gangs automatically, et cetera. But I can remember when, uh, when Minister Farrakhan came to town mm -hmm. some time back, and I interviewed him about this piece, and we talked about this thing. And I had suggested that, you know, what's the possibility of your you're taking on a contract with the federal government 
and uh, and just manage those apartments, those federal housing, and this, that, and the other. And the, you know what happened? Mm -hmm. Bottom line is that this is the only man that I've known, as long as I've been around, that could get all of these young people together, regardless of what what colors you have, and have them talking to one another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I, I, people talk about all this other stuff, but but I, I felt very comfortable and felt he was very credible on that line. So anyway, the long and short of it all is that I tried contacting some of the other entities out there, the et cetera, and say, look, give him a contract. Give him a contract. It's that tough. In Chicago. Mm -hmm. We're out in Chicago. I don't know of anybody in the other than maybe Jesse. Jesse's there too. But 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 Minister Farrakhan, I think if given the opportunity to say, okay, fine, we got this problem and we want you to handle it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And here's the contract. You can pretty well write up the guidelines in terms right. of what you, what you feel are the end results and give them the money to help those young people. I mean, where, where have you seen young people have you, well, you know, right here within our own community, running around with a suit mm -hmm. and a towel, mm -hmm. selling papers. Yeah. And, and with spend, families. And a lot of them after spending a long time in jail. That's right. You know, because he give them hope. That's right. He gives them uh, a sense of being, why you should, you know, uh, how to change. Yes. And you have to change. Right. They say the hardest thing to change is only an eighth of an inch thick. Yeah, oh, I like that, Bob. Now, you Bob, know? that was another thing I want to throw out to you again. We, again, we've been talking. By the way, folks, mm -hmm. what we're doing now is that we're kind of like talking to some of the issues mm -hmm. that are relevant and hopefully will become part of the discussion while these folks are running for president. Right. We want them to put this on the table because there are some issues, that, as far as I'm concerned, they're not discussing, and these are some of the kind of things that we want them to think about. And so I think that if we do these kinds of things, uh, whoever gets elected is going to have to respond back to these other issues, even though they have their own agenda, right? They have their own agenda. Yeah. But if we can force them a little bit more, they might deal with some of these issues. You know, it was uh, it was another organization I used to be a part of called A. Philip Randolph Institute. Oh, remember that one? And one of the things, one of our themes years ago was... A. Philip was, Randolph, was that, yeah. was, that's what the... Uh, uh, Pullman, Pullman uh, Carter? Uh, he was, uh, he took him 10 years to get a contract with the Pullman, uh, Pullman Porters. Pullman Porters, okay, okay, yeah, okay. For the Porters. But it was, uh, we, it, our theme was collecting after electing. Collecting after, after electing. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means that they come to you and they want your vote. But you just you give them your vote because they sound good. They give mm -hmm. you good sound bites, mm -hmm. and then they go do what they want to do, and you don't never ask for anything. Well, back, okay. And so somebody sits up there in the in the office and says, "Well, maybe these black people over here need mm -hmm. this." Mm -hmm. Well, you never tell them what you mm -hmm. need. You never explain why your neighborhood looks like it does when three blocks down, there's some other people living, and they're okay. in a perfectly okay. calm neighborhood. Okay. So. Collecting after electing. Go to that politician and tell them what is needed in your area. You know, and that's what we have to get to. Right now, I say the cart is pulling the horse. Mm. We, we vote for them, and then we follow them. But we're supposed to be the horse. Mm. We're supposed to be telling them what we want done. Mm. We got this thing where they're telling us what they're going to do. Interesting. Well, look at it. I tell you what, we've got, we got about, about another five minutes or so mm -hmm. on this piece, and I'm going to throw some other things out to you real quick. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, I, I, noticed, I noticed the Democratic <laughs> Convention, and they were as they were announcing the, the votes, mm -hmm. if you will, in terms of support of the, uh, of the president. Right. Uh, I noticed the people at the podium uh, for the, or the Oregon delegation, there was uh, uh, Senator Ron Wyden, and mm -hmm. it was, uh, what's the other senator's name? Uh, Senator Merkley. Merkley, and I saw Loretta there. Uh, uh, Multnomah County. Okay, uh, right, right. Yeah. And I guess the thing I was concerned with, it was, uh, Senator Wyden was making, making the presentation. Have you right. guys reinstated him? I mean, after he made the point about, <laughs> and, and the Romney <laughs> folks are still using the Paul Ryan and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the Wyden help plan with Paul right. Ryan. With Paul Ryan. Are, that, they, are they still together? I mean, what's the deal with that, Bob? Well, what they what they showed are they the supporting, Democrats. Was it, now, what, what is, is, is no, what they showed Senator the Wyden supporting uh, no. Governor Romney? No. On the health plan piece? No. But they still associated with Paul Ryan. Now, why is this? Because anything to get your uh, get you to try and divide. Okay. They're using any and everything to divide. Okay. They thought they were going to use President Clinton against, Pre uh, against President Obama. Mm -hmm. They tried to use that to divide, and it didn't work, and they so came out and showed. So he's lying. Huh? He's, uh, so Romney is lying about Well, this. They, they tried to put together a piece. 
Well, they did. And it, they tried to, and it was voted down. That was that. Then Ryan went with somebody else to put together some stuff, and that's what was out there. But uh, but Senator Wyden had nothing to do with that. Okay. You know, matter of fact, he voted okay. against it. Well, it looks like we got two minutes, but we can talk a little bit more about this stuff. Oh, yeah. that, but then we're going to do more of this as, oh, as it yeah. goes. And and we we would invite you, if you will, we practice next time around. We'll open up the line and. And they'll give you enough opportunity to, to go out and maybe look at the show again. We're going to have this on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, if you notice that um, on YouTube, by the way, I had the opportunity to interview uh, former Governor Vic Atia. Mm -hmm. It was quite an interview. It was a very good interview. And uh, you can go to YouTube and uh, catch this, 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 you know, this piece right here. If, you don't, if your friends don't have Comcast or whatever, you can get it on your smartphone or you right. anything like that. Mm -hmm. and the whole idea is that we're going to open up the, the lines the next time Bob and I get together. And we want your participation. It's going to be very important that we get your participation because that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, folks, whoever's going to be president, we've got to live with it. That's it. Bottom line. And so, um, uh, so we want to thank you very much for for being a part of, of the show with us. We, we did most of the talking, Yeah. right? And I think it's good. I mean, uh, Bob and I, we've been knowing enough for quite some time, and, uh, and we're in both camps. Yeah. yeah, and one of the things is, you know, you vote for the person that you feel is going to do the best job yeah. for yeah. you. Well, that's what Colin said. For Colin you. Powell. That's what Colin said. <laughs> for you. For you. You've been very selfish about this. <laughs> that's stuff. it. You've been yeah. straight up about this straight whole piece. Up. I think that's a good idea. Nice. I think that's a good deal. Well, okay, folks, we look like we're, we've, uh, we've gotten to that particular point. Again, thank you for being a part of us. And by the way, like I said, you got to get into this election. It's very important. you got the businessman on this side, and you got the social person on this side. So at the end of the day, hopefully we got a business social type of a situation. That's right. It takes both. All right. So with that, thank you very much for being a part of us, with us, and we will see you next time around. Have a good one. As George Page always said, back to what you believe. Remember old George? Peace. Boy, he was a good one. <laughs> Take care, folks.